Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anil and welcome to my channel Let's Be Healthy. Today we will be knowing about can dementia be cured and what are the latest developments in research going on around dementia. So let's dive in in our new video. The good news is yes, there are many medicines and other treatments that can help with dementia symptoms. Let's discuss some medicines to treat dementia. Most of the medicines available are used to treat Alzheimer's disease as this is the most common form of dementia that can help to temporarily reduce the symptoms. The main medicines are acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. These medications prevent an enzyme from breaking down a substance called acetylcholine in the brain which helps nerve cells communicate with each other. Donepezil, rivastigmine and galantamine are used to treat the symptoms of mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. Donpezil is also used to treat more severe Alzheimer's disease. There's evidence that these medicines can also help treat dementia with Lewy bodies and Parkinson's disease dementia, as well as people who have mixed dementia diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease with vascular dementia. There's little difference in how effective these medicines are. However, reverse stigmine may be preferred if hallucinations are one of the main symptoms. Side effects can include nausea and loss of appetite. These usually get better after two weeks of taking the medicines. The next one is memantine. Memantine is suitable for those who are unable to tolerate acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. It works by blocking the effects of an excessive amount of a chemical in the brain called glutamate. Side effects can include headaches, dizziness and constipation, but these are usually temporary. Medicines to treat challenging behavior. In the later stages of dementia, a significant number of people will develop what are known as behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia, which is also known as BPSD. The symptoms of BPSD can include increased agitation, anxiety, wandering, aggression, delusion, and hallucinations. These changes in behavior can be very disturbing and distressing both for the person with dementia and for the person caring for them. However, there are coping strategies that can help. If coping strategies do not work, antipsychotic medicines such as Resperidone or Haloperidol may be prescribed for those showing persistent aggression or extreme distress. These are the only medicines licensed for people with moderate to severe Alzheimer's disease. Risperidon should be used at the lowest dose and for the shortest time period as it has serious side effects. Whereas haloperidol can be used only if other treatment have not helped. The decision to prescribe medication should be taken by only a qualified consultant psychiatrist. Antidepressant may sometimes be given if depression is suspected as an underlying cause of anxiety. Let's talk about treatment that do not involve medicines. Cognitive stimulation therapy CST, involves taking part in a group of activities and exercise designed to improve memory, problem solving skills, language ability. Evidence suggests that CST benefit people with mild to moderate dementia. Cognitive rehabilitation. This technique involves working with a trained professional such as an occupational therapist and a relative or a friend to achieve a personal goal such as learning to use a mobile phone or other everyday task. Cognitive rehabilitation works by getting you to use the parts of your brain that are working to help the parts that are not. In the early stages of dementia, it can help you cope better with this condition. A reminiscence and life story work. Reminiscence Work involves talking about things and events from your past. It usually involves using props such as photos, favorite position or music. Life story works involves a compilation of photos, notes and keepsakes from your childhood to the present day. It can be either a physical book or a digital version. These approaches are sometimes combined. Evidence shows that they can improve mood and well-being. They also help you and those around you to focus on your skills and achievements rather than on your dementia. Now the question arises, can dementia be cured completely? There is currently no cure for dementia. In fact, 
because dementia is caused by different diseases it is unlikely that there will be a single cure for dementia although a cure may be possible some years away there are some very promising advances here are some of the areas researchers are working on and their findings so far number 1 on my list is stem cells stem cells are building block cells that they can develop into many different cell types including brain cells or nerve cells Scientists have taken skin cells from people with certain types of dementia such as Alzheimer disease and reprogrammed them into stem cells in the lab. They have then triggered these stem cells to become brain cells. By studying these cells, scientists have gained important insights into how the damage to the brain begins and how it might be halted. These brain cells can also be used to test potential treatment at a very early stage. Number 2 on my list is immunotherapy. Immunotherapy involves boosting the body's own defense to fight disease. It's one of the approaches that has been very effective in other diseases such as cancer. In dementia, some studies have used vaccinations against abnormal protein that build up in the brain in Alzheimer's disease. Number 2 on my list is immunotherapy. Immunotherapy involves boosting the body's own defense to fight disease. It's one of the approaches that have been very effective in other diseases such as cancer. In dementia, some studies have used vaccination against abnormal protein that build up in the brain in Alzheimer's disease. Other studies have used monoclonal antibodies which are known as man-made versions of immune system proteins to target these proteins to slow the disease. For example, monoclonal antibodies have been designed to target the amyloid protein which builds up in the brains of people with Alzheimer disease. Several studies involving vaccination or monoclonal antibodies targeting amyloid have so far been unsuccessful. However, lessons have been learned from these failed studies and a number of new clinical trials are taking place. One such trial is the Clarity study which is measuring how effective the monoclonal antibody Band 2401 lisinumab is preventing or delaying the very early stages of Alzheimer's disease. More recent trials have shown promises and one treatment using an antibody called aducanumab is currently under the consideration by the US FDA. In addition, immunotherapies are also being used to target the tau proteins in Alzheimer's disease and in some other diseases. Next on my list is Another area being explored by researchers involving specialized immune cells in the brain called microglia. These cells are involved in clearing out debris from the brain. In Alzheimer disease, these immune cells appear to become overactive which may be causing further damage to the brain. Current studies are trying to identify how to prevent this. Number 4 on my list is gene based therapies. There is a great interest in using gene based therapies. to target genes that can cause dementia such as alzheimer disease or frontotemporal dementia these gene based therapies are also being used to reduce the production of proteins involved in a dementia causing disease such as tau in alzheimer disease number 5 on my list is repurposing medicines developing new medicines to treat dementia takes many years and millions of funding repurposing existing drugs used for other conditions is another often quicker ways to find medicines to treat dementia current medicines being explored as possible treatment for alzheimers and vascular dementia include those used for say type 2 diabetes high blood pressure rheumatoid arthritis number 6 on my list is identifying who's at risk of dementia expert know that damage to the brain is caused by alzheimer disease can start many years before symptoms appear if people at risk of alzheimer could be identified at an early stage it is hoped that treatment could be offered that would slow down or even stop the disease a major study called prevent concentrates on people in their 40s and 50s to identify those who are at a greater risk of developing alzheimers on the basis of families and genetics it aims to understand what is happening in their brains before symptoms appear Specialized brain scans known as PET scans have been developed to study two proteins namely amyloid and tau in the brains of those with Alzheimer disease. The aim is to increase the understanding of the disease process and also to identify those people who will benefit most from new drug treatment. 
Although PET scans are sometimes used to help with dementia diagnosis, a number of different trials are now underway in people who are currently well but are at increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. So, prevention is important. Even if we find an effective cure for dementia, it would be better to try to prevent it from happening in the first place. Research has shown that the risk factors for heart disease and stroke such as raised blood pressure, diabetes, obesity and smoking are also the risk factors for dementia. By modifying or changing these risk factors in the midlife, the risk of dementia could be reduced up by up to 30%. If you are eager to explore further and know about risk factors and prevent dementia, I have a special video waiting for you. Please click this video here for a better understanding. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative. I am Dr. Anil and I will see you in the next video. Stay kind, stay blessed and most importantly, stay healthy.